Although with Jarvan, now Misfortune suddenly rockets up in priority because of how their ultimates work in tandem together, the Cataclysm for the setup for the bullet time. And of course, Misfits Gaming, what do they prioritize on the other side? It's not going to be the Zyra Khan that was available. Instead, Senna Lee Sin. And reminder that Senna completely slipped through in our yep. game number one. She hasn't really been seen a lot in the LCS outside of Cloud9's hand for Sven over there. Um, she's almost completely absent in the LCK, so... This is still Misfits Gaming putting priority on a champion that has fallen off a cliff globally. And there's some misfortune that we were talking about. As soon as Jarvan is locked in, boom, misfortune is just right there because of that setup. Really good combination if they can layer it together. Going to be paired with the Nautilus. And we're anticipating down in the bottom lane there for Dreams. And now let's see how Miss, uh, Misfits Gaming decide to respond. They've got themselves a potential bot lane support to lock in if they wanted to. And for the time being, hovering in mid lane. Of course, we got the duo and the jungler here for Shulka, which will allow Misfits to prioritize one of these solo lanes to ban out, and it will be the Braum. I'd expect um, pinching the mid lane pool here because they have red side pick, or Misfits have red side pick, but Rumble's interesting. I guess Rumble makes sense because it also goes along with uh, Misfortune Jarvan oh, yes. and Oda Wamne, known for his uh, Rumble performances. Hasn't necessarily lived up to them in uh, recent weeks, to be fair. And of course, again, focusing on their solo laners. LeBlanc taken away from Schalke, and you would anticipate Misfits can do another one. Uh, so set, two games in a row, two times red, tie, a red side ban. Wonder if uh, EU teams were also looking at their like, high priority first pick options. Just one of the trends we get to track throughout the weekend. Yeah, um, so there's the mid lane bans that I was yeah. expecting. The LeBlanc, the Cassiopeia. We already had Febby kind of flash the Azir. Things like Rise are also still available for him. Um, the Zoe has high priority in something like LCS. So if it is Azir, there's a potential for a Zoe out there. Abadage uh, has been much more known for his assassins, his LeBlancs, his Yasuos, but with Jarvan, it's a bit of a scary situation to go for Yasuo here, whereas you normally see it in tandem with Gragas. Okay, Gragas, of course, was banned away in the first rotation. He has been one of those really high priority picks here in EU. And now we get to see what do Misfits decide to lock in? What do they feel comfortable with to combo with their Lee Sin? and their Senna. And of course, what options does Shelka have in return? Abadage and Odawamne want to see what they can do with Lurox, the new jungler coming into week three of the LEC. And it will be their timer ticking down as Diana is now once again locked in. So seeing this one a little bit more, that secret OP, not so secret anymore. So already you have uh, so much backline access with a Lee Sin and a Diana. And then also when you put the Railgun on top of it with Senna, yeah. um, her reach there. So again, if Bebevin has a, a better game than what we saw from SK previously, and he does pop back into that backline, uh, try to blow someone up with a, a Lee Sin kick, and then Senna just finishes it by shooting straight across through them. And there's the Zoe that we touched on previously. All right, so seeing a rising in popularity. Um, what do we think here now about and the, the composition, how it's shaping up. We've got some team fight power, we've got some pick power, but if anyone gets locked inside any CC from Nautilus or Job and combo that with a paddle star, and that's tickets, GG. Mord as well to throw it out. Okay, so what do you make now of the five man comp? Well, it's the Mordekaiser that we've seen can act as a soft counter to the Braum when Braum puts up his shield for yeah. the misfortune. I think it's not an every time situation, but we have seen that Mordekaiser grabs Braum, pulls him into the Thunderdome, um, and then there's no stand behind me. What is the wall called? Yeah, that is it. Yeah, uh, to block the bullet time. Uh, unbreakable wall is actually Thank that you. one. Stand, stand behind, behind me is the, the W. The, the thing is, I think you have to be careful with the Thunderdome because to me, the Thunderdome is going to be the Cataclysm with the bullet time on top of it. So it's going to be quite confusing. The Nether Realm, I prefer that if you're more a combat fan. Okay, yeah. But we'll have to see. We're not at Evo. And there we <laughs> And the last uh, pick at, uh, selection now for Dan Dan is going to be the Aatrox. It's one of the champions that we talked a little bit about coming into the week. So zoom out, work at both of these comps. Fair amount of dive getting in your face. If Misfits can stick to Shalka, they could be in trouble. And if Shalka can keep them at arm's length, Maybe Misfits are in trouble, what do you think? So one of the issues that I've had with some of Misfits drafting is I feel like they draft hard to execute compositions. Like, there's no big Wombo combo that you've seen like the SK Gamings rely on. Um, and it, it's not that I don't think Misfits can do it, it's just the consistency of which they can. This is like a composition that in the hands of G2, you'd be like, this is going to be fun to yeah. watch. But there's just, there's so many moving pieces that really need to come together um, for Misfits to find a lot of success on this comp. So that's what I'm watching for. Okay, so we want to judge it, but that's kind of been one of the underlying trends for this Misfits gaming team. Um, 
when we were preparing and, and researching and discussing the players, Misfits are a team that have sort of a couple of key examples that show you they're still learning, they're still practicing, they're playing to develop and to grow. And I think one of the quotes you had, which I fell in love with, is they're not playing for today, they're playing for tomorrow. Is that fair? Uh, yeah, and I think that's probably what a lot of people will apply to these newer squads, the Vitalities, the Mad Lions, the Misfits, that it is about that development and what you're going to measure there. So there's reasons to be excited for this Misfits squads, particularly with these young, unknown names. Okay, so what I'm going to ask you to do for us, Gurney, if you can, let's look for some examples of where Misfits are setting up a play, something that we consider like a playbook, and then see how much they've learned, see how much they can, or how well they execute the expected play. So the analogy that I'm going to go with for Schalke versus Misfits at this point in their career is that Misfits, as their five members, if each member is a finger, are trying to make a fist. That's what they're trying to do. They want to make a fist, and then they just want to hit you with it as hard as possible. Okay. But the issue is, is that they're still learning. So sometimes the thumb gets on inside, they punch you, they break their thumb, they break their hand. Sometimes it doesn't quite fold, they take a swing and they miss. Schalke, also five players, five fingers, but they can't make a fist, and they don't want to. They just start poking eyes. They're not working together as a team. This is not, there is no form of unity that we've seen from them in the, the first four games. And it's just about individually, can they, can, can forgive and gouge an eye out? Can Oduwamne, like, I don't know, poke a side or something like that? And that, that's the big issue that I see with these teams. And what we found is, no, not many of the individual players in Schalke can do anything as individuals, really. Despite the fact they don't get crushed, Schalke are one of the teams that are, are definitely up there when it comes to, uh, I, I want to use the word like evenness, um, to put some like numbers in perspective. If you look at the numbers on the bottom of your screen, the percentage of time that Schalke spent with a relatively close gold amount is 57%. Then 33.9% of the time was the major deficit, which is obviously the majority of the gold being in your opponent's hands. So they spent a lot of time being really, really close and then nothing happens and the other team just wins. That's what's happened four games in a row for this squad of very experienced players. And it, it feels like things are fine for kind of individual lanes, which is what you expect for Schalke. This is kind of like the, you must be this good to ride the LEC because <laughs> they're like the measurement. Like if I can't beat this guy in lane, then I don't deserve to be a top end team. But again, as soon as it gets to the teamwork element for Schalke, they just haven't found that synergy yet. So we'll see if this new jungle iteration can uh, maybe inject some friendship into the squad. All right, Lurox has officially met the you must be this good to ride LEC bar. And of course, we'll see what he can do. Uh, starting to clear out top half of the jungle. Febivant gonna make his way down, um, placing a ward similarly to what Abadaga has done. And as it stands right now, B-Boy and Denk are pushing into dreams and forgiven. So we don't get to talk a lot B-Boy. Uh, Dracos and Ender just kind of mentioned some of the the stat issues and how there has been improvement from kind of the first week to the second week. I will say though that from like a drafting perspective, when you look at Misfits drafts, um, B-Boy and Dinek are basically able to play anything. There are some teams, like when we talk about Schalke, who feel like they're really narrow, that they can only play a certain type of champion. And again, it hamstrings them in draft. Misfits don't have that problem. They can draft anything, but with great power comes great responsibility. Yes. And that's why we sometimes have these issues where the compositions are really hard to execute. Because just because you can play anything doesn't mean you necessarily should. Correct, Timundo. Uh, Venus had some strong words about Dan Dan's top lane Nocturne. It was a week ago, if I recall correctly. This time around, the Aatrox into Mordecai is a little bit more traditional, shall we say. And therefore reducing the expectation, at least in that setup. But it's really going to be around this mid-game fights and how Misfits want to move around the map with this Senna, Braum, Leeson, Aatrox combination. On the, other hand, on the other hand, like if Schalke can find themselves a good combo between Jarvan, Nautilus, and MF, that's just a really easy direction to follow. I want to point out that what our observers just showed us is that Dandan Dan has set up a freeze. Um, so Odawamne has to be very far forward in his lane. So Razak's going to take his Krugs, and then there's the potential that Odo can be ganked, which is why Odo is, like, terrified up there, and he's, like, standing near the bush, just, like, waiting to check for this Lee Sin to come flying out. Uh, and Lorox, I almost said Lorax. <laughs> Lorox has now reset his position and could potentially head topside to uh, cover, but now the wave is starting to push back for him. Yeah, so now Dan Dan's going to be the one that'll be in a little bit of pressure. As he gets grappled and pulled forwards. I was following Razork's positioning, but he's now moving to the chicken camp and is somewhat parallel with Lorox. 
curious if Dandan's going to take his back here. No, he's going to walk it in. Okay. All right, this is a bold move. Cotton, let's see if it works out. Norwalk's not going to... I don't know if he'll get there quickly enough. Instead, he's going to be focusing on the Gromp. Just move into his own jungle. He uh, just swept his own... I'm talking about Jarvan here. Sorry, I'll use his name. Jarvan has actually just used the orb to sweep his own jungle, and it's because they had vision that uh, Dan Dan moved down into the river. A very common ward is that one that's placed right on top of the Gromp and the blue buff. Um, so you're going to start to see this maneuver from junglers a lot more, and then constantly checking places for that. And we'll see how it evolves for the team to pick more creative warding positions so they can get the information um, when they do get wave priority, um, placing wards deeper into the enemy jungle. Okay, I like that. I'll keep my eyes open then on how often it gets spotted out oh, as well as placed. Uh, both top laners uh, contesting again. Oh, Dandan actually didn't complete the recall. He started to channel it, but held onto it for a while. Forgiven uses make it rain, steps forward 37 to 43. Small CS advantage to Bivoy and Dene because they've been shoving into Forgiven and Dreams' lane. And now Razork making his way towards the Shalker jungle. He will find uh, Lurox if he continues north. Instead, it's just popping the blast cone, removing one of those opportunities or roots. And Lorox will drop the flag on Febberman's head to delay the back. It just cause him a little bit of frustration. Yeah, and I think the issue for um, Razak there was the fact that he was losing priority in his mid lane. Yeah, Febberman does have TP, but his mid laner wants to take the back, so there's no reason to go on a, a walkabout in the enemy jungle, especially when you've already set up, like you said, denying that blast cone for the ocean drake in here. So, good timing here so far to start it off, but Shalka somewhat aware. So, Lurox Misfits is already responding. They feel really confident to do this because they have access to TP and Shalka do not. Aatrox walked back to lane. Oh, Lurox, Lurox not going to be able to steal in his first game on the LEC. Razor picks it up, but the fight breaks out. B Boy's in trouble, forced to flash defensively, goes inside the mist. Teleport now coming down. Razor will stay outside of the Make It Rain. Dreams gets tagged by a Winter's Dan Dan. He's about to get stunned, has the ability to get caught. Dan Dan is the man man. Not going to find his target though and unfortunately on the back end it's Febivin that picks up the first kill I really expected more from the Aatrox but it is Febby that gets the kill <laughs> yeah and it's just unfortunate for Dan Dan that he doesn't pick up anything there uses the uh, the TP cross whereas now Odo Omne is getting um, free experience free gold just kind of funneled into him but again that was the difference maker of Dan Dan when he held the wave when he built it up when it crashed to Odo he got to walk back to lane he had the TP and he opened up the space for Misfits to feel confident to pull the trigger on a first Ocean Drake. So great wave management there to allow his team to pick up a monster objective. And do you think it's one of those situations where you can see what we talked about before the game? Misfits, a team that is learning, that is kind of to the, learning the plays in the playbook and then trying to execute them as best they can. Yeah, the idea I yes. think was sound there, but now you have an Aatrox who is uh, 20 CS down <laughs> pretty, without TP. Pretty far back down. So it's also the fact that Dan Dan. He TP's on the top of this fight. Oh no, that's Febbin. Okay, I was there's, like, Ooh. there's Dan Dan just south of Abadagi. I remember he came in from the bottom. I was like, wow, that's a big walkabout. But yep, yeah, that's all I got. Yeah, not, <laughs> not too bad. I, I literally thought Abadagi and Lorix were gonna get popped there, and unfortunately it didn't happen. So I was ramping up. But the man who did get the kill, Febbin one zero zero on that Diana. And just to quickly talk about some experience difference here. <laughs> Febivin, 233 LEC games all time. Contrast that, he may have more games than everyone else added together. I think if we include even some of the Shalka members, but this is somewhat what you expect of a very experienced player leading some hungry new rookies on the Misfits squad. I will say B-Boy's number a little bit uh, unfair. Unfair there. This is, this is not LEC games, of course. Okay, because B-Boy, of course, has some LPL games. And I think some... Um, minor region uh, games in there as well. Yeah, definitely the case. But I think that the main point being, there are still a number of rookies, especially in the European scene. And of course, with Misfits, while they committed for that first Drake, which they secured, it is the Rift Herald that goes the way of Shalka Nulfia. And I prefer seeing that. I prefer seeing what the, the Herald can unlock. And this eight and a half minute swap for Herald is more off or, or becoming the norm more and more. But it was a very different reason why it happened in this game yeah. versus the first game. Forgiven has just gotten access to level six. So when we saw Mad Lions go for the eight minute Herald swap, it's because they felt really strong. They had the ultimates, they walked up there. They made the conscious choice that Herald is worth more than us, uh, more to us than the Drake. Um, Shaka swapped into it because things went 
dramatically wrong bot yeah. lane with the, the dragon fight. Um, they lost a lot of key summoners. They didn't have time to kind of sit back into the 2v2. So to get tempo and uh, momentum back into the game, they decided to be the first team to rotate towards the Herald and try to get a foot back into this early game. Which is something that you want to be seeing more from Shelka. We need to see this team continue to figure out what happens next. We talked earlier about how in the laning phase, they don't really get you know, obliterated, but as we get to the 15, 20, 25 minute mark, the threads start to unravel for Shelka when the fist needs to form and you need five units coming together to punch the enemy in the face. Um, that's where they really start to struggle. So I want to see what they can do with the Herald and whether Lorox can be one of the guys that helps them uh, find some direction. Well, this composition that Shalka have put together should be pretty easy mode for that because, again, it relies on a lot of wombo combo and, and then just pressing R all together. So, Trevor, they don't, they don't need to make a fist. They just all need to press R okay, at the same time. While looking at the same direction. Okay, now that's... that's so they've reduced the complexity somewhat. Alternatively, Misfits have increased their complexity. So what does the next few moments look like? Um, I can see Lurox, the Rift Herald, still inside his inventory. He's near the mid lane. Where would you like to see him use it? I know you mentioned you really like the, you know, fourth and fifth plates, but not many of those are available. Actually, none of them are available. <laughs> I think it's uh, about who he wants to accelerate here. Um, and they're actually giving a lot of free space to Forgiven. It's Dreams who's constantly kind of cheating in towards the mid lane and giving Forgiven access to like solo EXP and gold. Um, obviously, if you can springboard MF and kind of get her to her first one and two items, that ultimate means that much more. Yeah, it does, especially Forgiven right now. Got himself a Caulfield's Warhammer. Pretty much even on CS, Dan Dan and Odo. Start trading a little after Odo was able to land the skill shots and pull him in. And you can see Lurox lingering just to the side. They're gonna use a bar. Sleepy Trouble Bubble won't find a target, but this is a numbers advantage in favor of Shalka, and with the Infernal Drake spawning, they have priority in the pits. Yeah, but uh, Misfits are around here to fight. I think that's exactly what they're gonna do. How will they execute? We're gonna find out, and he's gonna step forward, holds onto the Fisher for now. Febivin's got the ability to dash forward, won't be able to find it just yet. Shalka, they were looking for the fight. Press off, press off, press off. Find a target to do it. Not gonna find it just yet. Febby, Sleepy, Trouble, Bubble. Shalka can't find the R buttons, and they are the ones that lose the dragon. They lose control of the pit, and now they're looking for the fight. Cataclysm still available, but they're holding onto the trigger. Maybe it's fear, maybe it's this coordination. We just don't know. The railgun comes down, and nobody's died just yet. Sonic Wave, Resonating Strike. Odo goes, oh no, as he's taken out. The second kill for Misfits make that three. Abadag is the next target. The portal jump is not enough. And it's a double for B-Voy. Frost, you said they only had to press R. Where were the R's? Okay, well, here's the issue, though. <laughs> <laughs> they had Herald. Shalka didn't need to do this. They could have walked into the bot lane and placed the Herald and forced Misfits. If they didn't like the dragon fight, they could have been like, that's fine, we can at least trade for the tower. But they just like, they tunneled in so hard. I do want to point out Dinnick here, because I think this is quite a cute play. I um, had the stopwatch. The fact that Odo is like, me and you, Braum, let's go, let's dance. Dinnick just hard denies him with the stopwatch, and then Odo's completely out of position, takes so much damage, and is the first person to drop there. But again, this wasn't a finger problem. This yeah. was the brain problem. You didn't have to play that out like that. There were so many other options before it came to this. And unfortunately, none of those options were selected. Did that Herald just die mid? It did indeed. It was summoned while we were in the replay just behind the mid turret. And as it was spawned, it ran straight into Febby's waiting arms. And he said, thank you for the extra gold. 1,500 gold up, Misfits. Two infernals, to, uh, sorry, two dragons to zero, four kills to nothing, and outside of losing the Herald, it has been a perfect game. And it's scary though, because uh, Misfit's composition really gets terrifying again when people like the Diana, when people like the Lee Sin have a lot of gold into their back. Because again, it's about you blitz in back there, yep. you find the quarterback, you put him in the ground, and then the railgun just comes across your entire team. And Misfits did that exactly the last time around, and now they've got more gold to continue to do that every single time we see these teams run into each other. Yep, absolutely the case. Now, we will see a trade of objectives here, as B-Boy and Rezork will put some pressure on Odawamne while that's going on. Dreams and Forgiven shoving the bottom lane, but I think Advantage Misfits overall, they're getting a little bit more chip damage in multiple towers. And of course, Danik, the Unbreakable. Oh, wow, won't even able to catch the shot. 
Let's quickly talk a little bit about Misfits Week 1 versus Week 2. We're approaching the 15-minute mark. Gold difference in Week 2 was plus 750. Seems a little higher than that right now. Majorly 22%. They went 2-0 last week. And they're starting the first 15 minutes of this game looking pretty comfortable, but it's not over yet. Yes, yes, yes. Complimenting Misfits. But I do have to make this point, though, because we may not get another opportunity to compliment Shalka, because I really liked actually what they did there. One of the things that Sinner really struggles with is her ability to push uh, towers because of how slowly she takes them. So for Shalka to just recognize that they could trade cross map and the fact that they have a real ADC in Misfortune and try to power through, uh, that was great play. Now they need to reset and sprint towards this Herald to see if they can like maximize the play, not just like 30 seconds in the play, but like two minutes out. Like if they can interrupt this, which I don't Trying know if they're gonna, gonna get there. To, no, <laughs> too slow to the play. Misfits able to get to the Herald, so the second one is secured by them, extends the gold lead even more, and now all of a sudden, it's Misfits that have got that next um, acceleration tool in their toolkit uh, to see which tower they wanna focus down. And now, Tempo back in Misfits' hands. Yep. It was there for a small window for Shalka. It really was. But isn't that kind of the case with Schalke as we, we, we go a little later into the game? You know, there's these, these moments that you see. Um, 15 minutes in, they're down. The substitution with Lorax. I admit it's not been about him at all, right? Uh, the two fights that have kind of happened have gone Misfits' way. And one of them started by Schalke, and the second one not really played out well by Schalke. Well, they get another opportunity as the Drake will be spawning in a minute. So there's going to be some dancing until we funnel gold and start setting up over there. Although, as I say that, we're actually setting up all our vision on the top side of the map. Where is the support here in the mid lane? Teleport available for Febivin. He's up in the top lane. Dan Dan making his way around. This is uh, what Misfits are doing is they're still setting up for the Drake, um, but obviously by prepping the top wave and pulling apart Zoe. They have the TP that they're playing with. You can see now Dinnick is moving in, placing all the vision, securing things like the crab. So yeah, they're playing top side, but it's simply because they have more cross map potential with double TP. Okay, so question now, are Misfits in a position that Schalke were for the last one? That Misfits have the Herald, they're kind of setting up around the Drake. So well, I think we they're can... about to use the Herald. Well, there we go. Um, exactly. But again, is it th the point I'm trying to make is if we were to contrast both teams' decision making in equatable like stages do we prefer here what misfits are doing yeah and it wasn't uh too much of a difference getting to use herald oh no all right time so now teleport's gonna come in this time around from Febivin just outside the pit dredge line won't find a target but the sleepy trouble bubble could be gigantic it's interrupted Razork the dragon will go the way of Shalka but what about the ensuing fight forgive him with the great flash to get away from Febivin it's a fight on multiple fronts Dreams is already down Lurox forced to run for his life Abadag is being zoned out and while Oduwame is in the nether realm it simply will not be enough gets caught out by the Crescent Strike Glacial Fisher comes down as well the Pearl's Cascade continues to tag him out Sonic Wave won't find a target and Resort stays alive a few seconds longer. Three members down on the Shulker squad and Dan Dan's not done yet. The Infernal Chains come out and Abadag is caught out. The Railgun comes down. Not going to find the damage just yet as Fairby finally finds another. Forgiven goes golden. He was the man that dodged the first skill shot, but he cannot dodge the last. It's an ace for Misfits and all Shulker got was a Cloud Drake. Shout out to B-Boy there with a very nice use of the stopwatch to hold the tower aggro. Okay, so here's the thing. Yeah, they got the Cloud Dragon, but Shulker they didn't have control over this. Even if they got this Drake, which I'm going to say that they were probably lucky to get, Misfits didn't care about the Dragon. They knew that they were going to win this fight and they annihilated Shalka. Like, if I had to pick what has defined or what has ended the game for Shalka, it's this moment right here. Yeah, there's still some tape to play. Anything could happen. We're not playing on the high end, but this is probably where it happened. This is now two times back to back that Shalka just gets so tunnel focused on the Drake. Like all they think about is the Drake and it is leading them to such ruin. They need to reevaluate what these monster objectives I don't know like what Drake is sweet talking them with, but it is not worth it. Yeah. It's not worth your lives, boys. B-Boy tags it. Lost shot. And that manages to tank it. Really good coordination from the Misfit squad. Multiple fights in a row. They've chased down. They found their targets. Nine kills to zero. 4,000 gold up. Shulka 0 is on the verge right now as Misfits very, very clearly 
in charge of the game and dictating the pace. You had a limit to that joke. That was the last one. That's uh, your first one. I need one more for the one moment. Okay. That's it. And I, I promise until then I won't say it. That's the only one you get. Okay, thank you. That'll be second and last. I promise. Uh, I do want to also then go back and compliment Misfits because, again, it was about like the setup, which yeah. that we didn't see from Schalke that you did see from Misfits. Things like using the Herald when you're trying to set up the Drake. Uh, it meant that once Misfits won that team fight, that then they were in, then able to snowball and make it mean much more because their waves were in position. So they got the kills. Uh, they got chip damage onto a structure. They have complete control of the map, things like that. And uh, of course, a lot of that's like sort of decision making and control. We talked a little earlier about the experience that Febber is bringing to the team. I've spent the last few moments while there's no action going on, looking at the player cams on stage. Beberman talks a lot. Like he's yelling and screaming and we anticipated that he's one of the shot callers and you have to expect that if he does have a guiding hand, um, it seems to be showing some some dividends, at least in week two and week three here. I mean, the assumption would always be that your veteran players would yeah. be a, a wealth of knowledge for teaching your new guys and that if they get ahead, um, it just makes them that much more powerful and probably makes Misfits look that much more confident around the map as they are just brute forcing through things. And of course it helps when you are playing against, you know, the ninth slash 10th place team at 0-4. Like, let's not forget that fact that Schalke, they've now lost their third tower. All outers are down. Misfits have done fairly well. They crescent, they cross the 20 minute mark, pushing some deep vision into this Western quadrant of Summoner's Rift. And with Baron open and available, now it's about pushing their waves and deciding when or if they want to play for that objective. And so the options that you have for um, Schalke, again, if they are to kind of get a foot back into this game, is probably through... Oh, it's really rough. Let's see if we can work this one. Probably through their side lane ability, like maybe the Mordekaiser, although I don't know the Mord versus Diana matchup very well. Like if Mord runs into Diana, is he just going to get popped? Because if yes, then I don't really think that there's anything that they've got. Uh, definitely not, especially when you consider the item difference as well. Nash's Tooth, fully stack Roa into a Seeker's Arm Guard and a pretty mask. I mean, it goes, you know, more than half an item down. Um, Razork got the Black Cleaver build on one with Warrior Enchant on his Lee Sin. There might be a window where once uh, Forgiven finishes Infinity Edge that they feel really confident on two item spike for Miss Fortune. And then again, just try to actually layer the Wombo combo. But again, I feel like that's it. Like, the window is so narrow for Schalke to find success back into this game. Whereas if Misfits are just patient, I feel like they can just cruise control through this game. Yeah, I get that. Man, what a difficult, like, uh, contrast from Schalke in 2019 summer to Schalke 2020 spring. Um, 0 4 looking likely to go 0 5 substitution this week. We have to see where it's going to land. But it's just, it's a difficult, you know, start to the split. Not the one that the organization was hoping for. And conversely, Misfits went from being one of the worst teams in 2019 to not at least like showing up with some rookies that, that show promise. I'm not going to oversell them right now. But the whole thing about this week that Frost, you and I were talking about was like cl adding clarity and definition to the middle of the pack. And this is definitely well, two games under our belt getting close to, you know, giving us some of that clarity. Zooming back into uh, this map, it looks like nothing happened, but I do want to point it out. Um, all of Schalke finally left the Drake. Again, the sweet n nothings that she had been whispering to them, they ignored it, they knew it wasn't worth it. They actually ran towards Baron, and it was a good heads-up play by Misfits to pull Dan Dan. I'll hold it, though. Right. Bebby. He's going to be in a little bit of trouble. Get ulted. Lash is available to him. He's now going to be in a 1v1 and puts a lot of damage down onto Odo. Still got the flash available to him in terms of the damage. Here comes Denek and B-Boy. is going to stay out just a few seconds longer. Manages to turn it back around. Feverman gets caught out by the bullet time, but just not enough to take him down. Now all of a sudden there's a stun onto Dreams. Dan Dan comes in with a teleport. He manages to top Infernal Chains. He's locked inside the Cataclysm. Abadag is trying to put some damage on the side, but the Power Star not going to find a target and nobody goes down yet. Misfits are able to respond in time. The item advantage, keeping them alive. Yeah, and that was kind of one of the questions that we had answered of the Mord versus the Diana. If that was going to be a possibility for Schalke to look for out into a side lane in that matchup. Nah, yeah. <laughs> didn't look great. Um, going back to the previous point, though, Dan Dan checked the Baron. I know that seems like pretty far back, but something to watch for is that when teams go for that uh, third, fourth Drake, technically it would be the fourth Drake, even though it wasn't the fourth one for them, teams will try to rush Baron. Misfits were aware of this. They had it warded and they had their top laner come down and check for it. And again, if we're trying to track where development is for Misfits, how well the coaching is working off yes. for Misfits, those are all great things to see from the, a very young squad. Yeah, very nicely done. Um, taking a look at how the 
starts it. I mean, Febovin survived such a long time, but obviously being locked inside the Realm of Death with Odawamne helps a lot in this numbers disadvantage. Yeah. Um, also had the stopwatch used it immediately as he came out. Uh, dodged a ton of the CC or the immediate CC coming out of it. And this fight is played so slow, and it looks like for a second that it might look good for uh, Shalka, but they just don't have the itemization. I don't think they'd spent a long time before walking into this team fight. And unfortunately, it just kind of fizzles out into nothing. But another team fight. Sorry, Trev. Sorry, I had to blow my nose. <laughs> <laughs> you just left me hanging. I know, I was like, <laughs> I froze. I was like, is this my moment? Do I get to be the play-by-play? -play? <laughs> well, we jump back into the game. Uh, and uh, just before that replay popped up, next game, Fnatic versus XL. You guys do not want to miss the match introduction. There's two British organizations, and we happen to have, you know, Captain England himself, Machine here. He's got something special prepared. So make sure you tune in for that. Right now, though, Misfits, they pick up their fourth tower. They're pushing in uh, this top half of the map. And look, there's a number of question mark pings from Shelka inside the Baron pit. Like, they're doing Baron? Should we check? Look right. at the vision. Oh, this is so scary for Shalka. But they actually caught them at a good time because Misfits have reset. Oh, yeah, they have. So okay. they, they can contest the vision, which is good. Here we go, though, Shalka fans. You have your tiny little window. The Essence Reaver has been built. The Infinity Edge is online. You need the ultimate layering of ours. But this is it. This is your... I guess this is Dan Dan's moment. <laughs> okay, where's, where's he going to go? What? Who can he find? Come on, Infernal Chains. Come on, Infernal Chains. Use the Darken Blade. Oh, no. Can he find the kill? That's one Darken Blade. The chains comes down. Portal jump comes up. Railgun in the face. Flash forward! And that's already won with some support from b -Voy. Lurok's forced to flash. Cataclysm's available to him. Razor comes forward. Dragon's Rage Kick is available to him as well. The Depth Charge will be used in just a moment. And now all of a sudden that's a kick back. Finds a knockup into Lurox! Give that man some air miles! Because Lurox went flying! And it's a double kill for Febivin. There will be just one more kill kill onto Wido as they peel backwards for Baron. Okay, that is all she wrote. That was kind of the one opportunity. Maybe they can turn a dream team fight for Shalka, but Misfits just slam the door on them. They'll now take the Baron and take even fuller control. What's the word here? Yeah, I like that. Even fuller even control. Even fuller control. I <laughs> just want to watch how long Lurox spent flying, because he was caught by the knockback from um, Razor's Dragon Range, and then was pulled in by Diana and literally could do nothing. No spells could be cast. I mean, if you look down the Misfit scoreboards, could you see more indication that this is a team? 109, 504, 406, 209, 1011. All of this is an unlucky 13 for Shalka Nulfia. And Misfits are just purely outclassing them. So let's take a look at the, uh, the rubber band here as Perfectly time. Good job, <laughs> observers. Oh, this is the kick. This is the kick. I wonder if they're going to give me a slow mo. Can you give me a slow mo? We'll find out. I'm literally just watching for the air time right now. Count? All right, there you go. In the air, in the air, in the air, falling back, in the air. Can't even get the flag and drink. Oh, welcome to the LEC Lurox. This is what it feels like. As Misfits with Barum, 10,000 gold up are starting to move forward. I'm having fun today, Cross. <laughs> that was a good call. That, thank you. <laughs> Lucky number 30, or unlucky look, number 30. Exactly. I've just been so impressed. Yeah, no, I'm just trying my best. It was just the one the one joke that I've got one more in the barrel for. No, okay. One more in the barrel for. We'll see how it works out. You're liking your numbers. I am, I am. I mean, you've got, you know, numbers in names and stuff, so you have to play with it. But okay. what do you make of Misfits? I mean... Ah, uh, they played great. Individually, as a team, been very impressed with their team play. It's been super clean, and we wanted development. I feel like you've had solid, clear trajectory, and I would say Dracos is probably feeling really confident in the suggestion that Misfits would make playoffs. Okay, I think that's fair after two and a half days of gameplay, right? And um, looking to tomorrow, Misfits will be playing Origin. Origin 3-1 and one right now. Misfits looking likely to be 3-2. and two. And you have to anticipate, like, depending on how they look tomorrow against the OG squad, that'll be a little bit more of a, a, a better, like, judge of strength coming up against that squad. And this is, like, raising my expectations. Had clean uh, objective set up. They're now playing 
or were playing all three lanes. This will be the final team fight. It will indeed. Febivan, 406 is coming in from behind. Razok takes a lot of damage, but he's put a lot down onto Odo on there as well. And the Crescent Strike comes out. Febivan dashes all the way forward. It's Denik that gets the kill, followed by Razork and Dan Dan. Once again, team play all the way around. The inhibitor falls and forgiven an Odo one there. The last player standing. Misfits Gaming put on a clinic. Live up to the trash talk on social media. And Misfits Gaming ask Shelka to rename to Null Fun. You said I was allowed one more. I gave you one more. You did give me one more. <laughs> I saw Misfits on a three-game winning streak. Exactly the case. Their first undefeated week last week. They now come in and they just clean Schalke's clock. I think the nicest thing that, that you helped me see and understand is the difference between what Misfits are doing, how they play the game, looking at some of like, the setups and looking at the uh, strategic decisions they're making and just how it is a little bit more clear that you can see that this is a young team trying something complex and maybe hitting themselves a little bit when they do it, but, you know, they're trying it and they seem to be landing it a little more regularly against the weaker teams. This is a really oversimplified um, kind of difference there, but I think really the story of these two teams was so clear when Schalke have access to Herald and they run into the Drake fight and they don't even think about trying to prep either mid or yeah. bot with the Herald. As soon as Misfits are put in that position, the Herald goes down. And yeah, they lost the Drake, but that was Schalke like trying to slip in and grab something that wasn't theirs to take and Misfits made them pay for it heavily. Absolutely the case. And I, I, the scoreboards for me are the fact that just everything insane. happens together. Everything is about the team. So picking your Kia player of the game, vote at LEC. Resorg, Febivin, or B-Boy. Honestly, it's a difficult decision. Um, I probably would go Febivin. I think his Diana was pretty clean, but at the end of the day,